What's up everybody? It's your girl Aisha and I am back with another video. If it's your first time joining my channel, welcome and if you've been rocking with me, welcome back. Here on this channel we get into all things faith, business, and lifestyle and in today's video, wait, let me scoot up. Whew. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I knew it was time to go hit the dough, not let it hit me on my way out. <sighs> How I knew it was time to go. How I knew it was time for me to leave my nine to five. I need the little dramatic sound. The dun, dun, dun. How I knew it was time to go. And honestly, y'all, I really spent some time um, just writing it down in my notes. Like several reasons, several indicators that led me to finally just taking the step, taking the leap out on faith to chuck them deuces up okay so if you're interested in this video or you're in a same or similar situation where you kind of feel the tug but you're not really like there yet i don't know if this video is going to serve as confirmation for you or widen your perspective or what but i'm gonna get right into it so um i'm gonna just start from giving a little background okay so from my former role and i'm only doing this I'm doing this because I'm coming up on six months as an entrepreneur and I haven't looked back since, okay? So, um, I was with my former employer for about two and a half, yeah, like two and a half years. Like, I was with them for two and a half years. I started July of 2018 and did not leave until December 2020. Well, the tail end of November 2020. So, is that like... Yeah, like two years and five months is how long I was there. Um, so I'll say about two and a half years. And from the beginning, everything was cool. Something that really, really sold me is coming from an audit background, which was like my first corporate job for a big four um, firm. Coming from audit into internal client services, it was a big difference, a big shift. But ideally, um, what really sold me is the fact that I was getting paid far more for far less like i was getting paid more for less work less headache less stress less less all less everything and i'm just like more money less work i win i freaking win i didn't have to worry about no busy season uh tax season spending over 50 to 55 hour weeks any of that i did not have to do any of that with my um, most recent employer okay so that was like something that really really sold me and from the beginning like work did start off slow it took us forever to get clients like our first couple of months or so was just so lax so chill until until about September September is when we finally got clients on our desk and that's when you know the real work started to kick in but after about two and a half years of being there, I guess I kind of like checked out when I reached my one and a half year mark. So literally almost a year before I actually left, I knew it was like, you know, going to be that time coming soon. It was just going to be a matter of when not if i was going to leave but just a matter of when i was going to leave okay so um i'm just gonna go through my list of notes that i wrote down to kind of share with you guys some of the indicators some of the things that were like red flags for me that really gave me that ultimate push and that confidence to just walk away so the first thing that i wrote was i was feeling internal guilt from not maximizing my potential basically so i say that to say because i I started feeling guilty guilty getting up every day or whatever going through the motions not feeling energized and what I was doing and just knowing that I had so much more inside of me I started to feel this weight on me okay like I'm like this is not what I'm supposed to be doing I know I've got more in me than this I know that I'm supposed to be a leader at some type of capacity and I'm not supposed to just be I ended up feeling like a do girl like a do girl kind of Although, like, that may be the wrong type of term for, you know, such a prestigious firm. But I just kind of felt like I was just doing, like, oh, yeah, you know, here's this, here's this, here's this, here's this. And I had, like, revolving, um, 
revolving work responsibilities like on a weekly basis to where you know I was just okay do it real quick do this do this do this or whatever and be done but it was just something that was just like weighing on me I'm like girl you are selling yourself short and so it really just started to eat at me and eat at me more eat at me more eat at me more and in the process of all of this every little thing started to bother me guys and that takes me into my next thing my next note i was mentally checked out of all meetings events um presentations like all of those things and i think those were all just triggers for me like okay you know stay the course right now stay the course stay the course stay the course but every little thing just started to just, I felt like it was like taking a piece of me every time. You know, little things started to bother me. Um, I wasn't engaged on stuff. You know, we would have, when COVID hit, especially, you know, we went fully remote. I, I used to only have to go in the office twice a week anyways. But so once we converted to being fully remote, everything that we did meetings with managers presentations meetings with le leadership everything zoom 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 i was zoomed out okay me listening in on meetings just turned into me like playing it in the background and i was like focused on other stuff because i just could not even connect anymore so if you've ever like experienced that where you know stuff seems to be going in one ear and out the other maybe it's time to start looking elsewhere and you're not really receiving like those conversations and those talks with leadership or your management and stuff it's not doing anything for you it's kind of just like yeah okay yeah all right so yeah like that was another thing uh and then another thing that i have on here um the glimpses of my future that god would show me didn't include my former role in corporate america so the me that god was showing me like the future me that god would be showing me so frequently it did not include me in that setting me in that predicament me in that position um and so that was another like wake up call for me. It's like, okay, am I supposed to stay here? Or like, you know, am I doing wrong? Like, am I doing wrong by God? Because what he's showing me, this is not it. Or am I supposed to be, you know, stay in the course and just accepting my season for what it is, temporary. Okay, so that was like something that literally kept messing with my brain because it's one thing, guys. It's one thing to know um, that you're going to be great or you're going to do this or you're going to do that or you got all these big plans or whatever and you see yourself as this top dog or in whatever capacity, but your reality is showing you different. Every time you look yourself in the mirror, it's like... When's that person coming or when I'm going to reach that life or whatever? It was just like a teeter-totter, teeter-totter, teeter-totter. Like, all right, this is what my reality looks like, but I know this is what my future is supposed to look like. And so it's like, when do I, like, when is the safe or appropriate time to let this version go or this, you know, reality go? You know, and so I know the more and more that I would like see the glimpses of my future or whatever or envision like my future self, my future lifestyle, everything. It was just like, am I delaying my process by staying here? That's what I started to feel like. And I'm just like, um, okay, so do I just dive in with both feet? Do I plan an exit strategy? Like, what do I do to make this, uh transition feel smooth or what do i do to make me not feel like i'm walking on eggshells every day that i open this laptop it's 7 30 7 45 in the morning and do this work for these clients you know so it was just like a I don't know, I had really had to come to like a happy medium and I had to spend some intentional time with God like, what's up? You get what I mean? Like, you're showing me this and where I'm living and what I'm doing right now is not in this picture. So like, what do I do, you know? So another thing, I no longer saw my job as anything more than a paycheck. Now, once you have reached this point, you know, it's, you are really, 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 stepping on your toes 
uh, you might as well just go slam your hand in the door or something so you can feel that pain. <laughs> so you can feel that pain of what you are doing to yourself. That's no way to live. There's a difference between living and existing. Okay, so once you've reached that place where you just feel like you are existing, like, yeah, I'm here, you know, I can't, you know, I can't leave, you know, something's got to pay the bills, or, you know, what am I going to do? Like, one, I want you to get your faith up, and two, I want you to realize how worthy you are to have the life, the career, the success, the happiness, the purpose. Like, you're worthy of having all of those things. Okay, so if a job is like making you feel like you don't receive, you don't get any fulfillment out of that role that you're in, um, it's like, what's up with you? That becomes something that you can only put on yourself. Yes, we do things, you know, that may be necessary for our current circumstances or our current situation. Um, and sometimes if God's telling you to stay there until he says it's time for you to move, then do that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not ever saying step outside of God or whatever and then you fall flat on your face. But if you are not being intentional about changing that situation, whether it is, you know, maybe shifting or moving around in the company or something to something different so that you can see if that gives you a sense of fulfillment or do you feel some sense of reward for being in a different position but in the same organization or if that means leaving altogether and pursuing something that you know energizes you that choice is yours hey okay, but there there's ways around there's ways around just not feeling like you are just going through the motions okay like that means you're stagnated in your growth um you're stunning your growth you're stunning your progression your development like don't do it to yourself like there's something out there for you or you're meant to start your own business which is what i did because i wanted to be and it's a little cliche to just say like yeah i want to be my own boss because that's not even it like if i in my perfect world i wanted to have you know be an entrepreneur you know and this is as of recent be an entrepreneur or whatever love a corporate position that i was in something that was interactive i really wanted to get into campus recruiting you know, going out to students and recruiting them for these big companies and stuff because me being, you know, well at the time, 23 to 25 years of age, I knew that I would be able to connect with students on a more deeper level because I was not too far above them, like ahead of them in our age range and from when I graduated from college. That was gonna be like my ideal picture. Yeah, I got the bond corporate job, but I'm also my own boss. Uh, I have all of these side hustles. I've got investments over here. Like I've just got, you know, my hand in a lot of pots. But I was gonna, I wanted to get into a position where corporate America, yep, that was just another income stream. That was one of my seven income streams. But as of right now, God had other plans. So that's some things to think about. Um, another thing that I wrote down, um, there was no clear development plan for employees in my industry to grow or level up. So if you are working um, in a company or you're a part of an organization where they have not been able to give you a clear picture of a ladder um, for progression, that's a red flag to me. Okay, so from my very, very first uh, town hall meeting, you know, we had our what is it like our industry lead um have like you know like a, a a direct conversation with everybody who was in my industry and i me being me that was one of my very first questions that i asked out the gate what does career development look like within this industry within our lane within our teams within our team structure what does that look like from the time i started to the time i left nobody ever okay like ever had a clear visual framework or ladder of what that would look like you were either a team member or a manager no in between so that's like i was like okay so what like it just didn't make sense to me and so i knew i had already you know i 
because my industry was new I, I waited it out for a little bit but that was a red flag from the beginning so if you're a part of an organization that has no clear structure of you know growth you don't have anything to truly look forward to in my opinion um so you know i'm not saying this to bash or anything but that's a red flag for me and i definitely think that um the program itself or my industry itself yes they were still fairly new and it has definitely grown and evolved over these last couple of years the industry has grown tremendously um but i think there's definitely some areas of opportunity and improvement to make that industry better and to keep people um and to build retention because i when i tell you there's so many people like when i left oh my goodness i can't even count how many people were leaving the firm um for similar reasons or just not feeling fulfilled or whatever like people were dropping like flies so that's something to be mindful of and to also take into consideration another thing that i wrote down well I, I briefly touched on this but i wasn't making a direct impact in the lives of others like i've always wanted to and that really started to bother me okay now it's one thing to do your client work you know connect with your clients be build meaningful relationships you know with our partners our managing directors all of these things but as far as um directly impacting the life lives of other people versus just the other than the reputation of the firm um that was something that was very very important to me and i knew i was like robbing myself of that opportunity had i stayed in that role um it's very important to me like i love to help people that's number one i love to help people and i love to take the lead on things i love people to um look to me to help them with their struggles their obstacles and how to overcome them so me being in my position i was not doing any of that okay so i wasn't necessarily getting to help people unless it was in my team within my team um and that was just limited to the day-to-day -day tasks that we had to do or different requests that would come in um so yeah that was something that was very important to me and if that is a deal breaker for you get out while you can um but like i said like if that's not something that um you're able to kind of just like walk away from due to you know current obligations that you may have i would highly highly suggest and recommend that if you are in a compromising situation with your role or the organization the nine to five that you work make sure that you're being intentional about something outside of work to kind of give you that work-life balance where you're okay over here you're not exactly feeling fulfilled but what you do outside of work and the purpose you know if you're pursuing your purpose outside of work or you've got side hustles or something that energizes you make sure you're being intentional about that to keep your life afloat if you are just you know you go to work and you just go home and you go to bed every day like that is not a good way to live so make sure you're doing something outside of work or in your free time to kind of give you that balance and pick up that slack okay um and my last thing my last indicator that i knew it was time to go um oh yeah every chance that i got i was working on things for my business now um my free time like when i tell you anytime i had free time that's what i'm doing like my weekends everything like consumed with what i wanted my business to look like or you know i was pursuing my uh business consultant certification for a, a, a good period of time when i first started my job i had also just started grad school so i always kind of was doing something else uh i never yeah for like my whole duration of working i never was just work 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 and that's it i was either in grad school i was either in school for my um i was in my certification program um you know i was side hustling doing uber and doordash stuff like that like i always have had something else going on and i realized now more than ever like that is what kept me sane 
Um, some people may look at that as like, dang, that's a lot, you know, that's a lot to carry. But when something is not fulfilling you, okay, and you know you have a vision and you know you have a plan for where you're trying to get, you can't let your job be a crutch or something that's holding you back from achieving the goals that you really look to achieve or accomplish. So yeah, those are some of my indicators um, for how I knew it was time to go check the deuces from my nine to five. And if that is you, stay the course, stay pushing or whatever. And I don't recommend, you know, leaving your job without a well thought out plan and strategy for what is going to be your next move. But if you do have the means to do so, like pursue your purpose, like that is the most rewarding thing that you can ever, ever do, in my opinion, is to pursue your purpose and be obedient to whatever God's telling you to do. OK, so I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for supporting whatever it is that I choose to do with my channel. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, share this channel with a family member or a friend, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.